Hi everyone, my name is Sadaf Allahiri from VLMS.net. Thanks for joining me again. In this video, I want to show you how to deploy vSAN without existing vCenter. If you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to get a notification when we add a new video. In this video, we will discuss VMware vSAN overview, vSAN deployment requirements and challenges, and a quick demo to show how to implement vSAN without vCenter. At the end of this video, you should be able to implement vSAN without having any vCenter server in place. If you are a data center specialist or a solution architect, you might face a situation that requires you to bring up a production infrastructure with few ESXi servers. In many greenfield environments, customers don't have vCenter server installed, and to reduce the initial cost of deployment, they don't have any other ESXi host to deploy vCenter. And this is a challenge. You need to have vCenter server installed prior to building vSAN, but there is no host or extra storage to accommodate that. Then how you should overcome this problem? There is a solution to this challenge, but let's go through the vSAN architectural basics and requirements and then see how we actually solve this mentioned issue. vSAN is a software storage solution from VMware and is fully integrated into vSphere. It provides almost all the functionality of a physical storage, but in software layer. This solution will utilize local hard disk of ESXi's and represent them as one single shared data store. It reduces cost and also gives the ability to administrators to configure and manage the storage from a single pane of glass. vSAN is an object-based storage, which gives the flexibility to assign different policies to different virtual machines or even to different hard disk of a single virtual machine. This technology supports two different flavors, all flash and hybrid. With all flash only SSD disks are being used, but with hybrid a mix of SSD and normal hard disks are being utilized. In terms of requirements for vSAN, you need at least three ESXi hosts to be part of the vSAN cluster and provide a storage. Every ESXi needs at least one cache disk and one capacity disk. vSAN pool these disks together and build a shared data store. Because vSAN is operating over Ethernet network for data communication, it is highly recommended to use 10G network cards for better performance. But 1 gigabit network cards are also supported, but only in hybrid mode. But let's revisit the vSAN deployment challenges. vSAN is a vSphere cluster feature and the module has been embedded to the kernel of ESXi so you only need to simply enable it, but you need to have vCenter server in place, as I mentioned earlier. Besides, ESXi disk needs to be intact and in unformatted state to be used for vSAN cluster. From vCenter version 6.7, we have the ability to deploy vCenter and enabling vSAN during deployment process. This way, you don't need any existing vCenter server or virtual infrastructure to install vCenter server on. Sounds like a plan, isn't it? As I mentioned, I'm going to walk you through a demo. In this environment, I have three standalone ESXi hosts that have 100GB SSD for cache, one 300GB SSD for capacity, two 10G network cards, and 24GB of RAM. For a successful installation of vCenter, don't forget to prepare the prerequisite like create DNS A and PTR records. So let's go through a quick demo to show you how you can deploy vCenter on one of the three ESXi hosts that you are going to use to build vSAN cluster. First, I mount the vCenter server ISO file to my local computer to start the vCenter server installation. I choose install and accept the license agreement. Then I determine the target for vCenter deployment. In this case, I specify the first ESXi host that I want to use for the vSAN cluster. Next, I accept the SSL certificate warning then I set the VM name for vCenter and configure the root password for vCenter appliance. For this deployment, I choose a small appliance size. And here you can see there is no data store mounted to ESXi, but I have the option to choose install a new vSAN cluster containing the target host. This is the option that address the mentioned challenge. After this, you need to provide the data center name and cluster name, which will be displayed later in the vCenter. Then I claim the hard disk for vSAN cluster and I will choose cache and capacity hard disks. You have the option to choose the duplication and compression 
and also the disk mode. And the last step before I start the vCenter deployment is to provide the network configuration. Then I press finish to kick start the deployment. The first stage of vCenter deployment install the virtual appliance and configure the initial OS settings on the vCenter server. Now when the appliance is up and running we need to configure the vCenter service in the second stage. First I set the NTP and SSH protocol settings. After that I configure the SSO settings like domain name and the password for the built-in administrator account. Then I configure the customer experience program and finally click on finish to finalize the configuration. This final stage of vCenter deployment takes around 30 minutes to complete. Because of this I speed up this video so you wouldn't have to wait for the whole process. Alright, on this stage the vCenter server installed successfully. Now let's check the environment. I log into the deployed vCenter server with the configured SSO password. As you can see during the vCenter installation, vSAN is also configured partially and the first host is added to the cluster. The next step is to configure vSAN itself and add two other hosts into the vSAN cluster. If you are interested to learn how to configure vSAN on a cluster, you can watch my other video tutorial. Hope it was informative for you and see you in the next video.